Hey Domchek Guru here, back for more The Division as we try to beat the uh, mission that so utterly decimated us last time. Uh, that was a little on the brutal side, wasn't it? Yep. But we're taking another shot at it, and while we're doing that, we're going to be talking uh, a favorite of mine, and I don't think it's hyperbole to say my second favorite anime of all time. I think that's fair. Okay, I'm on fire. That happened right away. Yep. So if I do a dive roll, will I uh, not be on fire anymore? Or does that not work? Probably not. Anyway, my second fav uh, favorite anime of all time, which of course anyone who's familiar with this channel should know, is Girls und Panzer. Uh, which is just delightful. So, the reason it's we're talking so about it now wholesome. is... <laughs> it's incredibly wholesome. It's shockingly wholesome. Uh, the reason we're talking about it now is that after a year of me talking about how great this show is, I guess uh, you and your wife finally got around to watching it. That's exactly it. Because <laughs> I had discovered this thing a year ago when the video came out. It was already a couple of years old at that time, but I, I found it delightful. I'm like, DM, you gotta watch this thing, and I guess you guys ran out of other things to watch. At least other things we could agree on. Oh, okay, there you go. And this is all on Crunchyroll, right? Yep. Okay, so everybody um, has a chance to see it now. Smooth. Oof. You would help me out here. An axe guy hit me. But if you could cir you can circle through the train and have no trouble getting to me at all. I'm more concerned about that axe guy who's coming to me. Oh, okay. Well, if you stay alive, I'll respawn. So, you know. Just take care of him. So, it's available on Crunchyroll. Anybody can watch it without any trouble, as I understand. Uh, tell me, uh, Now I'm going to ask, first off, uh, how delighted were you by this show? Like Very, I have to say. Isn't it just fun? More than that, it's like... Sort of... Ooh. Weird, goofy mixture of like oh well this is actual tank combat with oh yeah you know nice. this is just genuinely fun well and that's the thing it's like it's so light and entertaining and there's a thing that is in the the graphic not i said graphic novel the the manga and in the supplemental material that i love about the uh, the justification for the alternate world of girls and panzer which is that uh, uh <laughs> In Mongolia and China, uh, you know, in a thou more than a thousand years ago, the thing that developed that the uh, the thing that determined whether or not you won or lost a battle was how good your horse archery was, and it was a well recognized fact at the time that women made the best hor horse archers. Consequently, when tanks were invented, everyone saw that uh, <laughs> everyone saw that tanks were just the natural extension of mounted archery. So na everyone has obviously realized that women would be the best people to run tanks. Oh, I'm on fire, and now I'm dead. Okay, I will try to work I'm my way I'm crawling over towards you. Yeah, actually do that, and I will keep behind cover and shoot this guy as he approaches. Oh, it's one of those boss dudes. He's got plenty of armor, doesn't he? All right, just get in here behind these barrels, and I will revive you. And we'll kill that guy. So yeah, uh, and that is that is the justific the in world justification for uh, Senshido, Panzerfaren, which is well, it's not it's the same basically as horse archery. So of course women would be best at it. Uh, I'm a I was a big fan of that justification, and honestly, every oh come on, <laughs> no, I'm gonna crawl over to. You. I wish I could help and sh help shoot while you were uh, while I'm down, like in so many other games. But no, I do not have that option. So yeah, within the uh, the in-world justification is that's just everybody knows women are better at tanks. And that's what I wanted to talk to you about because I've heard a couple of things, but I haven't had an extensive conversation ah. about this with anyone. Just how good is the, the theoretical tank combat in this? It's actually not bad. Okay, that was embarrassing. <laughs> like the tactics make sense. Their use of formation. I know all of the. I know all of the tanks, and this is what the people on my channel have told me. All of the tanks are incredibly like well built and incredibly accurate to the actual tanks. Yeah, I think they've put a huge amount of work into that. 
to the point where people love tanks the way that liberals love (laughs) self-flagellation it's a drive-by that doesn't really make sense but okay uh yeah (laughs) <laughs> no, but it's like it's clearly a uh, it's clearly a show by and for people who adore tanks, right? Yes, it is. And I think that makes it that's what makes it so weird that it is like it's just a high school sports show. Like the the high school anime and the high school sports manga is such a well defined genre. You know, whether it's about tennis or soccer or water polo or basketball, there are literally hundreds of these series, right? But this yeah. one is about tank combat. It follows the similar beats. And a girl who is naturally talented at the sport, but for whatever reason she had a trauma, so she doesn't want to do it anymore, and she's let down her family, and now she has to meet a new group of friends and redeem herself. Like, the beats are the same, whether this was a... Uh, ah! Okay, I didn't notice the bomb. Uh, whether this was like, uh, you know golf leg, uh golf legend asuka or whether it's girls and panzer you're hitting the same beats but here just the fact that it's about tank combat gives this gives it this giant crazy otherworldly feel so there's nothing else like it out there just by virtue of the setting being so bizarre oh let me know if you see any ammo because I'm, I'm oh back, there. back here okay just leave me over here just follow me all right, I just pressed the wrong button. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, the that, that's the thing. It's like just the fact that the story beats are being run through the filter of... Uh, <laughs> being run through the filter of tanks, and it completely transforms the feeling of it for me. Like, it's like... It, it is like an entirely new thing. Wow, this ammo is very far away. Yeah, because you ran right past it. Oh, shush. Well, no, the this gunfight game continued. Rewards attention the, to detail. The gunfight continued past this area, so it's not crazy yeah. that I didn't double back. Uh, but anyway, and I think that's what impressed me the most because it's like just by putting in this crazy new area. And my one of my favorite lines right at the beginning is, "It's like you're gonna stand out the top of the tank. You could be killed." That almost never happens. <laughs> yep. I mean, it's one of those things I do really enjoy. Yeah. Um, Fury is one of my favorite movies, even though it has the least realistic fight between a tiger and anything. Really? Yeah. <laughs> what? How does it botch it so badly? Um, the tiger moves. That's the first way it botches. Because if it, there was a tiger in concealment, cranking off rounds against exposed Shermans. Why would it ever move at all? Like, where the fuck is this? And they're like, dude, what? Why are you I gotta so stop dumb? doing this. Alright, I gotta start looking for bombs. These guys love yeah. traps. And yeah. so the tiger just gets out and starts rolling around, giving them a chance to spot it? Yeah, getting closer instead of, like, just Hammering them there. until they're paint? Yeah. Oh, damn. Okay. But you like Fury. Uh, Fury actually gets mentioned in the video game. Really? Yeah. Uh, They talk about the tiger duel in the video game. Uh, People, they also talk about Kelly's Heroes, which is, you know, one of people's other favorite tank movies, even though it's barely a tank movie. Yeah, it really is barely a tank movie. There are tanks in it, and tank fetishists just will watch anything with a tank. (laughs) You can't tell me that's not true. Well... Uh, I think and, my uh, big takeaway is, um, yeah, that, sorry, I had to concentrate on putting a sticky bomb directly on a person. I saw that. Very impressive. This time I actually dodged when I saw a firebomb coming, so I'm learning. Uh, but yes. Uh, and, oh, and also they mentioned Kelly's Heroes in the video game, t- uh, too. Oh, and in the show. They actually, because, uh. She, when she's spying on the Americans, she references Kelly's heroes as her fake identity. You Kelly really? does. Yeah, it's it's one line. It's, it's such a minor thing, but yeah, it's it's delightful. And so, other than the tanks moving ridiculously fast all the time, yeah, that was another <laughs> thing I noticed. That is, I think, would it be fair to say that the two most unrealistic things of the sh- uh, in the show is that all of the tanks have a, uh, 
have an inner coating on the inner walls that is so sci-fi intensive that it stops tank shells that go through the armor. And that's why nobody ever gets hurt doing this, even though they're hit so hard that the whole tank, you know, falls on its side. Honestly, I could see that being not that badly unrealistic if it's like, okay, you're firing a shell made of wax or rubber. Yeah. Oh, and it would be I fine mean, if... Um, the thing is, I would have no problem with it, with it in the show if they said we are firing dummy shells and computers determine how bad the hits are. But when you're watching the show, like, the, the shots are actually piercing through armor and setting things on fire inside the tanks. True. So, yeah, they, they do try to get away by saying the crew compartment has, like, a curtain of carbon fiber... You know, like, blocking that makes it so no shrapnel can get in and no shell can penetrate. But if if a thing hits the com the crew compartment, they just say, okay, that tank's been killed because obviously the crew is dead. That is yeah. the logic within the show world. And it's the most sci-fi thing in the entire show. And, of course, the I second most sci-fi thing in the show we is... We have... Yes. Watch watch out. Okay. Um. The, fa the fact that we have... Oh yeah, by the way, all these aircraft carriers are now high schools. I know. I don't know why, like, I don't really understand the justification for turning aircraft carriers into high schools. I guess there's no war left in the world. Like, I don't know exactly what the world outside of Japan and of war Girls and Panzer is, but apparently there's so little war... That they that have they repurposed have... aircraft carriers to become high schools. And tankery is an international sport. Yes. And that is the thing I'm most curious about, curious about and what I would like to see in a sequel series. Right? Because they're doing... At, the show ends, and then they, do it, they did a theatrical release movie, and now they're doing a second season, which is in the form of six movies. Right? And that is going to be, quote-unquote, the end of Girls in Panzer. But what I would most like to see next is, well, what are the professional leagues like? Because within, it is clear within the show, right, that there is, a, like, an actual professional sport of Panzerfair and Senshido. Yep. Yeah, so what is that like? What are the leagues like? What is the competition like? This is this is stuff I've I need to, to really up about. my skill power because that was just fucking embarrassing. Really? <clears throat> well, I hit a grenadier... Yeah. With um, a sticky bomb, and he's like, okay. Oh, no. Yeah, the sticky bombs are supposed to be way better than that. I just missed with mine, so I cannot uh, commiserate. Okay, well, they're I shooting get at me. that purple engineer, that'd be... I'm going to try. Oh, I hit him. But he pinned me down pretty hard. Ooh, can you see when I tag people? Yes. Nice. That is very important, thank you. You're welcome. It should help you keeping these guys suppressed. Nice. That guy's do got a weird circle over... Oh, he's setting up a turret, okay. Yeah. Now that turret's got limited ammo, right? I'm pretty sure. Wow, I've run out of bullets a lot. <laughs> Yay, he's suppressed. For me to be suppressed! You're free brave. to move up! All right, so one of the um, yeah one of the things I love most though is I'm, I'm so interested in seeing oh damn that engineer killed the hell out of me I'm just gonna crawl back to you don't worry keep that head down I'm gonna get behind this bar and you can uh, get into cover before you heal me and that's the thing that really gets me about this game that I'm still not used to is I suppress a guy he's crouched down in terror I run up beside him oh, I shit. fire a whole clip I'm behind you I'm behind you. I fire a whole clip oh, of bullets. Oh, it's more the fact that I'm, like, advancing on this guy with my ballistic shield. I'm like, yeah, I'm invincible, bitch. And he's got a flamethrower. And, like, this sliding door opens, and there's 90 guys in there. There we go. That's what's more satisfying. Okay, thank you, Sticky Bomb. I finally got it going. But see, I'm very curious about what the, uh... What the future like? Are they really abandoning the franchise after the the movies end, or do they have plans for the future of the franchise? And they've got a long time to think about it because you know the movies. I mean, the second they're only doing one movie a year, and the second movie comes out next week. So 
we really? got like four more years to wait before the series is over. Hopefully. I mean, yeah. something I've been thinking about is, um, recently it's, we're coming up on the D-Day anniversary. Oh god, we are, aren't we? Oh. June 6th. Yeah, June 6th. Oh, sorry, I almost shot a civilian, but I missed it the last second. But, Wasn't um, for a lack of trying. Yeah? Canadians have always gotten a bad rap for our performance. On D-Day? Even though, yeah. Really? Um, we failed to close the fillets gap, but part uh. of the problem was we had three times as many anti-tank guns as anyone else. Oh. Because we were expected to blunt the advance of Panzer divisions. Damn. Yeah. And that didn't end up helping. Yeah, we weren't going to be able to, uh, shall we say... That was great. Yeah. Simultaneous explosions. <laughs> that made Keep me very up, happy. Like a really good pace with our crappy Shermans. Yeah. Going up against like hardened SS battalions from the Eastern Front. Right. Okay, I see what you're saying. So you're saying Canada was in a way set up to fail. Well, we we did what was expected of us. They're like, oh, you didn't close the Flays Gap. Yeah, but who could have? I got gotcha. you. We could have. <laughs> had we had the right equipment, or what was the main drawback? Um, between equipment and manpower, they were just undersupplied. Well, there's only so fast you can move artillery and anti-tank guns, uh, which is something okay. actually Canadians are famous for. We're, really? We invented the rolling barrage. I, I never heard that. That's fantastic. I mean, not really what you'd expect from a peacekeeping nation, but yeah, here we are. Wow. So we move, we fire artillery, move it up, we fire it again, we move it up? No, Rolling Barrage is a series of artillery strikes which are specifically um, targeted so that they move forward. Your every uh, strike moves forward. Oh, okay. Yes. With overlapping um, fields of fire. So. So yeah, it creates a giant, in, a dispersed f whole field of fire. Moving up. Yeah. Okay. I have heard of that. I just didn't know what that was called. Yeah. Neat. So, you know, it enabled Canadian regiments in World War One to just simply walk forward. And oh, because the there artillery. would be a constant set of artillery shells going off in front of them. Exactly. Neat. I've never heard that. Yep. Wow. Yeah, it's interesting. So, um, you, you, that's, that's why, actually, the big reason I wanted to ask you about this is, you have this real familiarity with the tanks and with the re, uh, reality of the situation. Yep. So, obviously, the speed is ridiculous. But it's insane. Yeah. No, it's it's crazy. There a tank drifts in like the third episode. And well, then later than that they had to like bring in the automotive club or something. Yes. Oh god, I love the automotive club to get the Porsche Tiger working. Yeah, they like It you was guys such a good design. But yeah. it was just uh, No problem. they got me. And there's a guy just Straight up flame throwing me. Damn it! All right, we might, we're down. It looks like. Oh no, wait! You're you're still alive. No, I'm not. Oh, you're not. Okay. Nope. Why isn't it called this yet then? Because you're on your knees, as compared oh. to like flat out dead, dead, dead. and on oh, fire. Okay. Well, we'll just respawn. Uh, yeah, actually, I, I do like that tiny montage about the Porsche Tiger of the Porsche Tiger being the worst tank there is. It's a king it's tiger, coming. but it's garbage. Yeah, it's like it's it's awesome, and we love the armor and a beautiful cannon. But yeah, it basically can't move, and if you try to drive it for more than five minutes, it will burst into flames. <laughs> oh, such a beautiful scene. So yeah, uh, now we're gonna ask the big questions uh, of the all of the teams. Who was your favorite team? I'd say the Russians. You enjoyed the Russians. Yep. Well, they have the best song. Well, the fact that they're like 
brought low by their own hubris, essentially. Yeah. They, they ima she imagines that she cannot possibly lose. To the point where she's like, you know what, I'm gonna take a nap while they stew in their own failure. Yeah. And in the meantime, they come up with this... Absurd crazy plan. Crazy plan. Yeah. yeah. This crazy plan to just drive straight through the gauntlet of tanks. And then lead them on a chase. Which ends up working pretty beautifully. I, I love the character of Katusha. One thing that I did not get watching the show, and you tell me if you got this watching the show, because I didn't get it at all, is what? that all of the characters in the show, except for uh, except for Nana, are in fact Japanese. I kind of got that impression. Okay. I didn't... They, like, I mean, when I first watched that, like, a... I assumed this was a... Like, they were actually from the countries that they were obsessed with. When I first watched it. But that was clear to you from the start? Because they're like... I don't know. Yes? I don't know. I don't know how else I put it, but like... It seems like they're cosplaying other cultures. They absolutely are. Yeah. And for me, I was not really seeing the difference between people cosplaying the culture and just how anime normally depicts those cultures. Yep. Whereas Nana, of course, is the character who actually is a Russian and actually speaks Russian. There we go. And apparently they added... Uh, there's a character named Clara who's the other Russian who shows up in the movie. And as I understand it, it's the um, the the voice actress who is Russian, I think is Russian and taught the, uh, and taught the actress who plays Nana how to pronounce, how to speak Russian and like how to pronounce things correctly. And so they liked her so much, they added her into the, uh, the movie. So yes, there's a second Russian character, but yeah. So you're right. I mean, I guess if you look at it that way, it is clear that this is a performance that they're doing rather than necessarily authentically being those countries. But because it's impossible, because of the way anime is stylized, it's impossible to tell what skin color anyone is, <laughs> which would be a good clue. Well, the way I put it is, how's the American team without any Hispanic or black characters... Yeah, it would be very weird. Alright, unless, of course, as you say, everyone is just Japanese. Yeah, which, I was which of course they are. And they all have they all have themes around there. Okay, I'm gonna go and grab some ammo, then I'll be there to help. Have you already started shooting people? Yep, so I'm just okay. gonna cower down here for a bit. Yeah, there, I tried doing this after we stopped last time. I'm like, can you just uh, climb up and then cower down and then do some other uh, plink away? And uh, No, they, they do pretty good at focusing fire if you cower down there too long. So I'm going to... Yeah. I'm going to go here and try and distract their fire so it's safe for you to move up, hopefully. I've got my shield! Yay! My shield is reasonably shield effective. I'm I saying a little thing called grenade out. And it killed somebody, Wow. That is not what normally happens with my grenades. Yeah, I know. <laughs> hey. Uh, seriously, though. No, no in general, the grenades in this game are like fucking oh, Okay, I thought garbage. you were saying that I can't aim grenades. Which is also true, but also not a nice thing to say. Yes. Okay. Uh, come on, just die already. All right, he went down. I'm going to heal up while you uh, distract them. So yeah, it's nice. I think the Russian teams were great. I personally really love the British team. I think they're fantastic. Uh, I love the way that they show up to watch all of the matches with tea and a carpet and uh, wall sections to put behind them because they are so delightfully formal and classy. And of course, some of it comes from uh, the oh, some of it. Oh no! If you could crawl this way, I think I can see. I'm you. working on it. Watch out! There's a yellow I guy. I see him. No, no, they got me with a single blast from a shotgun at a hundred yards. I'm kidding. It's thirty yards. But anyway, like I had full health. Single blast from a shotgun at thirty yards knocked me right down. These guys are very powerful. Yeah. As we know, but we have just proven that it's not not doable. Like it, it can be defeated. We're getting closer. Alright, so I'll just hop down. 
get behind a wall before they notice me. Okay, they notice me. Okay. Now, oh, come on. Okay. There we go. Let's work in something... Approaching like... tandem. Yep. There okay, we go. I got, the... I got a grenade incoming. Just keep your head down. It's nowhere near you. Just don't run off towards where I was. There we go. I'm going to grenade them in response. All right, now keep their heads down. And one of them is dead. All right, we're, we're working this. It's good. Just keep pressure on them. I think we'll be able to push them back. I'm going to move up to the next deal. There we go. Okay, so. I'm advancing. Shit. Here come the... the boss, Ma boss Martinez? Uh, yeah, and his goon. Oh, he's got a flamethrower. His, his super goon has a flamethrower. Great. I know I'm surprised. Almost all these guys have flamethrowers. Yeah, well, no, to... a lot of them have flamethrowers. Not almost all. God damn, these grenade guys. And I dove into a wall. Okay, this is not my night. I'm on fire. <laughs> Ah, you right, could circle around to help me. me out. That would be great. But there is a guy with a grenade along the back wall. Yeah, I got... I got nice cover over here if you can sprint over to me, but... Uh, That's what I'm trying to, to do. sprint over to me. Whoa! That was crazy what just happened. Yeah, this flamethrower dude is not screwing around, is he? Nope. Alright. And here he comes. So on fire. Yeah, and he's essentially bulletproof. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like spraying and praying over the top of my uh, thing there. Well, I think this was so crazy about this part is like, and that's why it feels so fundamentally unsatisfying. Like it's, it's tactical combat in the, the um, the the Tom Clancy mold, right? Yeah. But that falls apart if enemies can just sh soak up 50 bullets and just charge your position. Like, yeah, they can just for soak that, the damage. Yeah, for that kind of gameplay to work, you have to be able to pin guys down. How do I put this? Guys have to be afraid of getting killed for this kind of gameplay to work. And what keeps happening in this game is I get to a guy and the guy will just be like, Yeah, I'm just going to charge you. I have yeah, I'm just eight, gonna... I have eight thousand health and three thousand armor. I'm just gonna charge you. And that's it. There's nothing you can do. It's frustrating, yep. right? It totally is. Yeah. You know, that's that's the thing that bothers me most about this game, is them fundamentally they're adding, you know, Doom style, Destiny style, Halo style, um, Get, they're expecting you to fight enemies like you would in a Halo game or a Doom game, but they're doing it with this with this uh, what do you call it? Where your control scheme is? No, you have no health. You constantly have to use cover. Well, that's two different things. Yeah. You know, and it works in Destiny in a way that it just doesn't work here. Speaking of things that do work, the opposite of that. No. Uh, um. Yes. Did you enjoy, like, okay, here's the thing. I know it's cute, I know it's sweet and things. Did you, did, like, the story resonate with you? Like, do you think it's a well-told narrative? It... It's hit and miss. Okay. Do you think there's not enough? Okay, if you can crawl over to me, I I've got can't, a decent I can't, because there's cover. a guy who's like, I'm going to just set you on fire right oh, here, right was, now. and I'm standing right behind him. Okay, yep. that's not a problem. I'm just going to, no, he killed me too. All right, I have a plan. Here's my plan. So if you were to die, you would just... And I were to stay alive, right? Yeah. You would be able to keep on fighting. Uh, sorry, um, if I kept on fighting long enough, you could respawn and rejoin the fight, right? No. No? No. You can't respawn until I either die or win. Yeah. Or okay, you revive me. Okay. Well, no, but if you die, die, I can't revive you. Yeah. Actually, you can. It just takes more time. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. Alright, well, in that case, I, I think we should massively spread out. Be, so what I'm going to do is, I'm going to get at the top of these stairs. I think that's actually a really good spot. Yeah, and that way, if they if things go south down there really hard, I can ambush them from up here, then I can jump over the railing and revive you while they're coming up to get me. 
Or you could just take pot shots at them while oh, no, they're I'm coming after me. Oh no, I'm going to be doing that, taking pot shots at. Uh, I sorry, I should have made that clear. I am going to be taking pot shots at them while they're coming after you and throwing grenades and whatnot. I just also want to have a solution for what happens when things go south. So, speaking of the uh, the drama in Girls and Panzer, is like I really got into right the the story of Miho and her her shame at failure, right? I think they, they set up the situation where... I mean, it's it's a very obvious situation. The whole, she had to choose between letting someone... Uh, winning the match and, you know, letting someone risk getting hurt. And she yep. chose to try and save somebody's life. And for that, her family can't forgive her. Because for them, the uh, success of their style of tankery... Which is the terrible way that uh, they it's translate... It's the Cobra Kai of tankery. It is. It is. I, I just hate that they've come up with the word tankery for the English translation of Panzer Farin and Senshito. Whoa! Be, um, okay, he followed me upstairs. Damn, I hate this guy. I really hate this guy. You've got him backing up, which is nice. This guy's the worst. Uh, yes, they're the, co they're the Cobra Kai. They say win at any cost. You know, the only, like, uh, if you lose, it's because you're weak, and that means you don't res deserve respect. And, uh, as a consequence, they're kind of crappy people. <laughs> but, uh, by the end of the, like, they do the nice redemption arc where, over the course of the season, we need to move. she earns her sister's respect, and she earns her mother's respect, kind of. Her mother's still kind of cold. Yeah. Yeah. Her mother's still kind of a monster, but at least her sister respects her by the end of the season. This is ridiculous, what's happening right now. Okay, get All behind right. this uh, thing with me. I'm going to heal you, and then we're going to just, like, sprint the hell away from here. Yeah, we're going to spread a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Run. Running. This feels yeah. good. Hey, we killed somebody. A little bit on fire. And I'm dead. <laughs> yep. Oh, my God. God. Oh, we're both dead. All right. Yeah. But yeah, so as a like as an arc, I think it really plays. Like I liked it. I mean, and the thing is there's so much tank action that they don't have much time for the character stuff. It is only 6 hours long, and like hours of that is tank combat. Like if you love tank combat, there's just so much of it for you in the show. They do not skimp at all on the action. There are like I'm trying to think, not counting like the the uh, display, the training battle that they do just with each other, although that is a fun sequence. But not counting that, there's like three full tank battles in the show, and there's one if you get the OAV, which I can't believe that isn't on uh, Crunchyroll. Which one? The battle with Italy. No. Yeah, it's not on Crunchyroll, which is very frustrating because it's like it is kind of important to the plot because they end one episode where it's like, and now we're gonna fight Italy. And then they come back, and it's like the aftermath. We fought of the Italy. Italy fight. Yeah, we that, fought Italy off it. camera. Like what? I was very jarred by that the first time I saw it, and then I find out later. Oh no, that's an animated. Uh, that is an animated special you had to buy, and it's um, there isn't a lot of you know big character developments in there. So they thought, ah, it's not that important to put in the main TV show. But it was kind of weird to watch the show for the first time and be like. Did I miss an episode? Because it feels like I missed two episodes of the show. At least two. Yeah. Well, you know, normally the combat lasts about two episodes per match. But yeah, like, you really do oh feel God. like you missed a Where did a you bunch. come from? Oh, yeah, he, he snuck up on you. I should have made that clear. I'm going to shoot yeah. him in the back. And it kind of worked. If you want to come up here towards the, uh... Oh, wait, just keep your head down. I was going to say come up to me uh, where I'm on the stairs, but... Yeah, just keep your head down. Oh, my God. That flamethrower is almost too effective. All right, I have a plan. I don't know if it's a good plan, but it's mine. It wasn't a good plan. <laughs> oh, my God! I had go. no idea there were so many yellow level dudes. It's like four. Yeah. There's like four yellow level dudes in this place. Maybe we should come back another time. I'm guessing, yeah. This is ridiculous. But again, I mean, it's just this game's frigging balance problems. How do you yeah. quit a mission? 
Let's I've never tried trans, to quit a mission. Let's go to a safe house. All right, can we just teleport there? Or, or something like that. I think as the uh, party leader. Okay, I just got to click on base of operations. Yeah, or something like that. And fast travel is there. I definitely know how to fast travel. I'm kidding. Uh, it's weird that it's not clear how to fast travel. It's this game doesn't have the best uh, mapping stuff, does it? The best UI? No. Yeah, the the user interface, the whole heads-up display, it's not fantastic. Okay, next up. Lincoln Tunnel Checkpoint. Wait, difficulty? We're playing this on normal difficulty? Yeah. This is normal difficulty? Yeah. Is that a joke? I feel like that's a joke. Yeah, this game is... Look, at this. there are four boss le guys in this level. Four. Yep. It's That's insane. And they just charge you. And they're not afraid of bullets at all. So, yeah, that's madness. I just run around the streets a little, find some looters to shoot. Because this is very frustrating. <laughs> gonna run in the general direction of the a mission we might do some other time so as a tank person what are there any tanks that you found particularly delightful to see um the japanese one really you, the japanese didn't really do the whole main battle tank thing okay so what is the significance of the design of the japanese tank that separates it out it's designed to be carried on boats and landed ashore. Really? Yeah. Like, okay. it's absolutely not designed for... Like, the kind of... So it really is kind of mobile artillery. You put it on a boat, you load a bunch of them onto the show or, or at once, and then you just pepper things with shells? No, it's like, kind of... Um, imagine it like this. It's okay. like, okay, we need... Do we need a tank? No. Who the fuck's going to have a tank on all these small islands? Of course. Okay, fair point. So... Oh, okay, so they had to be able to rapidly deploy them throughout the Japanese archipelago and all of the islands around there. Exactly, and the point would be, we have a tank and you don't. Ah, okay. So they don't even have to be the best tank, it's just that the American military wasn't loading tanks on all these tiny islands... But the Japanese would be able to do that relatively exactly. quickly. So they could get armored reinforcements going so much faster than the Americans could. Well, they'd have armored reinforcements at all. Wow. Okay. So that's why, uh, I mean, so they might not be the best thing in tank battles, but considering the other team didn't have a tank, like the other side wasn't going to have tanks at all, there you yeah. go. You got this great bulletproof mortar shelling the dudes from great distances, and there's well, nothing. It doesn't the matter do. how tiny the gun is on the tank. Yeah, it's still got a tank gun, <laughs> and all they have is like a World War One machine gun. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah, that's the one of the things that always uh, amazed me about it is the whole idea of. The machine guns that you have to crawl on top of the tank to use. That, that was a, a very American make. thing. Really? Not a lot of other countries did that? Name one German tank that did. Oh no, all of German tanks have those gun ports. Yeah, because they're sensible. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's kind of like, do you know the story of the guy who invented the T-34? No, what is it? Okay, so this dude, he's like... Oh man, I've invented this dope ass tank, but no one's listening to me. Okay. So I'm going to, you know, build this prototype, and then Moscow will listen to me. Oh no. Okay, cool. You know, no one's going to argue with that. Yeah, I'll just Moscow show. It'll says, be a fait accompli. I'll just show them the finished project. They'll love it. It'll be perfect. So they go, okay. Impressive. Now what? He's like, uh, uh, I'll show you how badass it is. I'm going to drive it from Kiev, or sorry, Minsk to Moscow. That's quite a schlep. Uh, 
2,300 kilometers or something. Oh my god. It's insane. And Any so he's like, he's like, yeah, I'm gonna do this. And we're like, yeah, okay, well, you have to finish line. If your tank makes it within this amount of time, you're good. You got the contract. Yeah, well, no, we'll take up your design. Remember, yeah. they're communists. They don't I know, but still. It's yeah. still a big deal to be the guy who made the new battle tank for the Russian armed forces. Yeah. Whether they're communists or not. But anyway, go for it. And what happened? So the guy's like, yeah. And he starts driving. And it's the middle of winter. Because, you know. Yeah, of course. Well, it's. I mean, you, you got the two months of summer. You got the two muddy seasons. And then you've got a long-ass winter. It's Minsk. Yeah. And so, dude's like, yeah, look at me, I'm driving this bitch. He's like, driving along, driving along. He's getting colder and colder. Colder. Okay. The tank's still going. And he just sort of goes... It's like I forgot something. Oh no, was there no heater in the tank? There was no heater in the tank. Oh god! He rolls oh, up. That's so terrible. He rolls up and Moscow's like, I did it, bitches. And they're like, holy fuck, we're impressed. And he dies three days later of pneumonia. Oh my god. But that ended up becoming the war horse of the Russian army. <laughs> Terrible oversight. Oh, that poor guy. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, um, the one th the story I remembered about tigers was that they were, they were like very effective, great guns, decent, you know, decent movement, great guns, solid armor, but they would break down constantly. Yeah. That you could expect to. It's like for every hour you want it. Like overall, on average. For every hour you wanted to run that tank, there would be half an hour of maintenance for that tank. Yep. Well, and that's why, like, like at Curse, um, what ended up happening was they're like, okay, these things are taking 9, 10, 12 T-34s for everyone that's knocked out of commission. Not necessarily knocked out entirely. Yeah. But for everyone that's at least disabled. Yeah. That's not actively chasing us and shooting anymore. So they're like, so if they're attacking us, why don't we just bury these bitches? Why do we need them to move? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> so they turn them into, like, just rotating... Turrets. Yeah, rotating turrets under the ground. And that's what they that's... did with a lot of these, yeah, Porsche Tigers. They're like, fuck it. Well, there's actually... Now I know the historical antecedent for this, because there's this part in... Um, uh, in, what do you call it? Uh, the game. Yeah. Sorry, in uh, Sniper Elite 4, where you, like, come across and are supposed to destroy a tank turret that's just sitting in the ground. Yeah. And I was like, I, had not, I was not familiar with that as a weapon of war before. Neat. Well, like, why are we driving this? We can put yeah. a foot or two of earth on it. That will stop most of the shells. Yeah. And everything else, well, fuck it, it's a tiger. Wow. Yeah, I mean, if you've got, as long as you've got a position that you know they've got to come down, right? Like, as long as they can't sneak around behind you, you should be pretty much set. Uh-oh, purple dude. I assume you see him, he's coming right for you. Damn, these guys love climbing over wrecked cars. I feel like you guys would be better at sneaking up at me if you stopped just doing that, but I'm not going to complain. I saw you. I got a chance to shoot you. Damn. There we go. So, now I'm going to yeah. ask you something. Do you know what happens in the movie? Not at all. Okay, so you have no idea what happens in the movie? Nope. Okay. Because uh, I'd be very interested. Uh, we're going to talk about the movie after you've seen it, because... 
Uh, the movie's pretty fantastic. It opens with a, a rematch between teams that I won't reveal to you because it's a nice surprise. And the introduction of one of the, uh, the two new teams that appears in the movie. Well, three new teams, but two new friendly teams that appear in the movie. And there's a, there's a, there's a new villainous team that I won't reveal. But um, my real question to you is, do you understand and can you explain to me why? Because I have one question about the show and I'm going to have one question about what you might want to see in the movie. Okay. Okay, question about the show. Do you understand and can you explain to me why everyone is so nuts for the mouse? Because everyone who comes to my channel is like, I gotta watch that video about the mouse. They cannot get enough of the mouse. So as a tank person, does it have that association with you, or do you get no. it? No! Really? Like, for me... The, no the mouse is like a novelty. Yeah. Kind of like the Japanese um, amphibious assault tank. I'm like, yeah, that's kind of cool, I guess. Okay. But, I mean, if you're going to be like, all right, Gun Wrangler, we're going to put you in one tank. All right, cool. Give me a Panther V. <laughs> okay. So I a mean, a King Tiger would be nice, but... But the Panther V, you're like, that's where it's at. Well, it has that perfect combination of speed, mobility, um, lack of maintenance for a German right. tank. For a German tank. Yeah. Relative terms. But. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's a very good tank. I can say it's a very good tank in the game. Like, it's actually a really great vehicle inside the game. Yeah. The the Panther. But, uh, okay. But so you just don't, like... So the idea of a giant... Uh, a giant Porsche engine, a 200-ton tank that nothing can penetrate. You're like, you just don't see the value of it? Well, because after a certain point... You know, in the real world, we have air support. <laughs> Well, I remember one of the drawbacks in the conceptualizing of the mouse was how many roads is it actually going to be able to drive down? There's also that. But I mean, like, like, even the Tiger. The big oof. thing with the Tiger was... Here, move closer. Oh yeah, no, I'll just come up to you. You're undercover. Yeah. Big thing with the Tiger was... You know, something like 75% of them were lost not to enemy action... From tanks, really? but... Um, what was the thing that took it down? Air support. Right, because like, oh, I mean, hey, once there's you spot it, you can just drop a bomb on it. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's like we said we were playing Sniper Elite 3 about the, the Rata. Right? That, uh, <laughs> that you know, it, it's a great conceptually, but a land battleship is just something that's really easy to bomb. <laughs> Well, not in the fact that um, Canadians had, what, the 25-pounder? Right. And so did, theoretically, the English. Okay. So you could actually, you know, have an AT gun that would... Well, Just slam the open. hell out of that thing. Yeah. While being far more mobile than the tank that it was shooting. I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Well, no, like what I'm talking about when I say an anti-tank gun is yeah. it's a big fuck-off piece of artillery. Yeah, but it, I mean, can't you hook it up to a truck and drag it around? Yeah, but that truck is super soft-skinned. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. I gotcha. Hey, we're, in a, we're talking to Roy Benitez. Great. Yep. Yeah, so, and my other question to you is... Is there a, a World War II era, like, you know, not Cold War tanks, but a World War II era tank that you would hope to see in the show that never made an appearance? Cold War era tank? No, no, pre-Cold War. Because the, the theoretical cutoff of the show is that um, in Senshido, at least high school Senshido, they've been very unclear about what the rules are for professionals. For reasons, I think they want to leave it open for if they decide to do it. But... Um, that any tank that was either uh, fully, like, whether or not it got built, any tank that was, like, fully designed 
by the time the war ended. So whether or not it ever saw combat, whether or not they fully produced it, if it was fully built by the time the war ended, you can use that tank in uh, Panzerfahren Tankery Senshido. So is there any tank that you would have liked to have seen in the show that never sh turned up? <sighs> I'm trying to think. What? There just isn't all that much. Gotcha. Yeah, because there's a tank in the movie that when I saw it, I was like, oh my god, why f why have I not heard of this tank before? Now I only want to play as this tank. And I okay. found out that this tank, which I'm not going to spoil for you, uh, was not actually seen in com never actually saw any combat, like, anywhere. It was just made to be one of their ultimate tank concepts towards the end of the war. And it was actually on its way to, like, being shipped towards combat when the war in Europe ended. So they're just like, oh well. Oh well. So we're just putting this thing back in the warehouse. So weird. Yeah, and uh, and so like, there's this amazing tank design that I adore and is wonderful in the video game, but it never actually had any combat in real life. And I've got to say, the thing that it most delighted me when I found out about because I had never heard of the mouse before the uh, the cartoon in the video game, like that I that had never entered. It had never showed up in a video game I had seen. I had never heard of the thing, right? So I was yeah. delighted by it. And I think what delighted me most was, right? What it tells you about the naming conventions and sense of humor of the people designing and building the German tanks. Because they're like, okay, well, what's our next tank going to be called? We're going to call it the Tiger. Because tigers are big and tigers are scary. Okay, we got something, uh, it's even more lean and t dangerous than the tiger. We're gonna call that the panther. Uh, panthers are, you know, everybody's deadly, but they're sleeker and meaner than tigers. Great, perfect. Okay, now we've got this big-ass uh, tank killer. Okay, it's just a giant monster can take out anything. Well, what's bigger and scarier than a, uh, uh, a tiger and a panther? We're gonna call this one the elephant. So they call that one the elephant. And then they're like, okay, here's the deal. I'm a guy working at the Porsche Corporation. I've got an idea for a thing even bigger and scarier than the elephant. It's going to be the biggest, scariest tank ever conceived of. What should we call it? And they're like, okay, well, what's scarier than an elephant? And they're like, mouse. Yeah. What scares elephants? What scares Mice. elephants? Mice. We're calling it the mouse. I'm like, there is, an, there is a level of wit and playfulness <laughs> to that to that naming convention that you know, like that you, you do not expect associate with from the Nazi cartoonishly, technology. Yeah, from the <laughs> cartoonishly super villainous. Well, and that's the weird part. It's like you really feel like the guys working at Porsche and Daimler who were designing these things really were just guys who loved their job. You know? Who maybe weren't thinking about the actual war and were just guys who loved that they got a chance to build tanks. You know, who there, who were like Werner, Werner von Braun was just a guy who freaking loved rockets. He didn't much care what those rockets were used for. He just loved the idea of building and firing rockets and wanted to use them to get to space and the moon. Yeah. And they were used to, you know, turn England, sorry, turn London into a pile of rubble. But then later he got to go to the moon with them. So yeah, and I and just seeing the cute, fun naming conventions of these tanks makes me wonder if the guys building the tanks for Germany were not that dissimilar from Werner von Braun, where they were just guys who loved the job. They were just guys who found this whole thing kind of entertaining, and they really weren't thinking of the catastrophically evil stuff that their creations were being uh, made to, to, uh, yeah, yeah. to enable. And it actually, like, because I've never seen, people have done so much work about, well, the guys who were building the technology that led to death camps, how did that, you know, sit with the rest of their lives? The guys who made the rockets, you know, Werner von Braun has had so much profiling, like, what was that like for the rest of his life? I, you've done the ones about, you know, um, uh, Albert Speer. I'm like, what were the Porsche guys? And I've never really heard what they felt about the whole thing. All of the Porsche guys who built, and all the Daimler guys who built all these tanks. 
It's like, what what were th was their take on how their inventions were used? And I don't know that I've ever heard that story. And I would kind of like to. And I'll be honest with you. Before Ghost and Panzer, I had never much thought about tanks. I liked video games about tanks, but that was the extent of to which I thought about tanks ever. And it has given me a lot more to think about in that field. In terms of tanks, well... Yeah. I mean, here's the extent to which I, uh, I knew about tanks growing up. At the War Museum, I knew there was a, uh, a Sherman. Or whatever the Canadian version of the Sherman is called. Yeah, it's called the Sherman. Or, oh, I thought... in the vernacular of the people who drove it, a Tommy Cooker. Oh no. Really? Yeah. <laughs> oh, damn, Sherman's were... Not... Yeah. Not, not great. well thought of tanks. Okay. But it's like, I knew that was there, but that's that's the extent I th which I thought about tanks. And that's like, I played games about modern tanks, fantasy tanks, battle zone. If you want to crawl back to me, I can save you. I've got pretty darn good cover. I mean, I'm in really bad shape, but I got pretty good cover. There we go. And so, yeah, I, it's, I only started thinking about it because of this, and now I play War Thunder, which is the, uh, you know, the online tank game. It's pretty fun. It's like Dreadnought for people who are lame. That is definitely a way to look at it. Uh, Dreadnought for people who... You're a ridiculous human being. Uh, but anyway, so, are you going to keep watching, like, do you in did you enjoy your time with Girls and Panzer enough that you're going to be like, yeah, I'll, ch I'll, watch the, uh, I'll watch the movie, I'll watch the second season? Yeah. Okay. I'm glad to hear that. We're going to talk about this more later, but... For right now, uh, we're going to close off this video with, I hope, a quiz question. Okay, what about? Well, I mean, like I'm not going to rely on your knowledge of tanks to come up with a quiz question. Are you kidding like me? superior tankery knowledge? Exactly. You didn't um, spend all these years becoming being obsessed with tanks for me to not do uh, lean on you for this one now. All right. Oh, god damn it, that guy's a good shot. Thank you. All right, we're going to double this up. Okay. What was the make and model of Fury herself? Oh, nice. Make and model of Fury, okay. I assume it's mentioned in the film, so. It's not mentioned in the film. It's, oh, damn, so you actually have to be an expert. You actually have to know what you're looking at. Damn, okay, make and model of Fury. I'm excited. All right, so if you're the first commenter below the video to mention that, uh, drop a comment. Uh, sorry, yeah, drop a comment below the video. If you're the first person to answer the question cor correctly, boom, you win a prize. So look forward to that. Uh, before next time, would you join me in encouraging everyone who hasn't watched Girls and Panzer to watch Girls and Panzer? Highly, and this is one of the very few things we agree on are gonna agree on 100 percent. you don't even like girly animes i really don't <laughs> but it's but i'm not saying has this uh changed your opinion on them but you admit that they can be delightful now yes i do uh, okay good all right so we'll see you back here next time where we're going to be watching more american gods and the first couple of episodes of season two of uh so the first, actually both shows, that's weird. The first two episodes of season two of American Gods and the first two episodes of season two of uh, The Man in the High Castle. All right, sounds good. See you back here for that, but until then, au revoir.